Hi, so I recently bought an Elgato Stream Deck, which is a little USB connected device that you can use to, for example, control my video light up there, control OBS Studio, which is a software that I use to do my screen captures and do my live streams, for example. And it can also control lots of other applications on my PC. And I have to say that all of that works very well. Now, I didn't get the Stream Deck specifically to control Cubase, but it is possible. So let's go. So like I said in the intro, the Elgato Stream Deck is a little device that you connect to your laptop or PC via a USB cable, and you can basically use it to control applications on your PC. So let's have a quick look at the Elgato website. This is a Stream Deck Mark II in black. So it's a little device with 15 buttons that can be defined for whatever you like. This particular one lists for $129 in the US at the moment, but there are other ones, for example, the Stream Deck Plus, which is a relatively new device, which also has four rotary knobs. You also have the Stream Deck XL, which has a lot more knobs, 32. And then you have the Stream Deck Mini, which only has six knobs. Now there's a lot of related products that you can see over here. There's a pedal, a Stream Deck for on your mobile, and that's about it. Now, as you can see over here, I also have a Stream Deck on my desk here, and I can, for example, use it to start up Spotify and check out the latest album of my band, for example. Now the Stream Deck comes with this software for configuring the Stream Deck. Over here you can see that the buttons are exactly the same as the one you currently see on my Stream Deck. You see that there's one empty button position over here. So I can add another button definition to start up an application. I can drag an open action onto this button and then I can link an application on my PC to this button. For example, maybe I want to start up the Arturia CS80 version 4 synth. Now you can see that the icon of this application has also been loaded and recognized. The only thing is that it's overlaid with the text over here. We can turn that off and then you just have the icon. And if I now push this newly defined button, you can see that it starts up the Arturia synth. Now on the right side of the software, you can see all kinds of actions that you can define. For example, there are lots of options that allow me to control my OBS Studio, the software that I'm using for screen capturing now. But it's also extendable in that third parties can develop plugins that allow you to control, well, whatever the plugin is for, really. And if we, for example, go to the plugin store, you can search for Cubase, and then you can see that there is a Cubase plugin, which allows you to control Cubase through key commands and or MIDI commands. Now, I have already installed this one, and this basically gives you an additional section on the right here, called Cubase with two commands that you can link to buttons. Now there are basically two ways that you can set up this plugin. The first one is that it allows you to control Cubase by key commands. So that's a very similar way as if you had typed some kind of key combination on your keyboard, which does something in Cubase which either has been predefined or which has been specifically added as a key command by you. Now this is a very easy way to set up, but the disadvantage is that Cubase has to have the focus in order for this to work. Because like for a usual keyboard, if you type a key, it basically goes to the program which has the focus on your desktop at that moment. And that may not always be Cubase. Another disadvantage is that there's no two-way communication. So there's only communication from the Stream Deck to Cubase, telling it what to do. And there's no communication from Cubase to the Stream Deck, in which Cubase can say what it is doing already. And that can be displayed on the Stream Deck. For example, if you have a play button on the Stream Deck to start playing Cubase, you may want it to turn into a different color when Cubase is already playing something. And for that it helps if you have two-way communication, but you can also set it up in this plugin. But for that you need to have some virtual MIDI ports defined that can be used for communication between the Stream Deck and Cubase. Now on the Mac you can just use the built-in MIDI Studio for that, but on Windows you need to install an additional application and there are actually a couple but the one that is suggested by this developer is Loop MIDI and that seems to work fine. So let's install that first now. Now a link to the Loop MIDI application is provided in the documentation of the plugin, but I'll also provide it below in the description. So once you download Loop MIDI, you get this zip file. And if you unzip it, there's Loop MIDI setup. Let's run that. So if you always want to use your Stream Deck to control Cubase, it's the easiest if you leave Auto Start enabled. So that Loop MIDI automatically starts when you log into your PC. I also like to have a shortcut on my desktop. And yeah, the program is probably not Windows certified. So that's why there's an option to suppress these warnings during driver installation. Agree to the terms, install. So it was installed successfully, so let's launch it. Now in order for Cubase to communicate with the Stream Deck, two MIDI ports have to be defined. One is Stream Deck to door. If you click on the plus here, the port is added. And the other one is door to Stream Deck, 
click on another plus and we have the two ports defined that are needed by the Stream Deck Cubase plugin. Now that's basically it for configuring the MIDI ports. Now in your Windows taskbar on the right side, there's now an extra icon in the tray for this loop MIDI application. And auto start has been enabled already, but you probably don't want the application window to become visible every time you log into your PC. So for that, you can check that little box start minimized so that it starts up in the background without you noticing. Now I don't have a Mac here to demonstrate how you set up these ports on a Mac, but you can just use the built-in MIDI studio to define two ports with the same names that I just showed you in Windows. Now next up is configuring Cubase to allow it to be controlled via these two MIDI ports. Let's have a look. And that can be done in Studio, Studio Setup. And for this to work, you need to add a generic remote under the remote devices over here. So you click Add Device, you add Generic Remote. So the first thing is to do is to set the MIDI ports by which Cubase will be controlled. So as MIDI Input, you can now choose the Stream Deck to DAW. As MIDI output, you can choose the door to stream deck. And then over here, you can define which actions you want to have controlled via these MIDI ports. But fortunately, the plugin provides a template for that, which you can import via this button. And this template file for the actions is available in your user directory that you used when you installed the plugin. You go to App Data, Elgato, Stream Deck, Plugins. This is the name of the plugin, Extras. And then you have the generic remote template in here. So you click it, say open, and you can see that there's now a full list of actions that can be used via this plugin to control Cubase. Now then it's important to click apply to use these definitions. Now one more thing to do is that in the MIDI port setup over here, you want to find the MIDI ports that you just defined and you want to turn off in all MIDI inputs because otherwise the MIDI on these channels will also be used to control any VSTs which you have in your project. If you have selected as input for these VSTs, all MIDI inputs. So just make sure that this is turned off for the ports that you just added. And that's it. And you saw that there are actually four definitions over here. One, two, three, four. And only two of them are actually used, being the Stream Deck to DAW input and the DAW to Stream Deck output of Cubase. Now both MIDI ports also have a related output and input and since we're not using them, we may as well deactivate them. So let's do that. In door to stream deck can be deactivated and out stream deck to door can be deactivated. Now don't worry if you by accident disable the wrong port, for example this one, you will get a warning because it'll say this port is currently used because you have set it up already in the generic remote definition. So that's what you need to set up within Cubase to make this work. Next up is how you can configure the Stream Deck to actually do something in Cubase. But before we take a look at that, if you like this video or somehow find it useful, please give it a big thumbs up on YouTube so that it gets promoted by the algorithm and gets shown to more people. You can also click the subscribe button and the little bell icon if you want to get notified when I publish another video. For even more support, consider using the super thanks button below the video or buy anything via the affiliate links in the description to these stores, in which case I will get a small commission without any extra cost to you. But let's set up the Stream Deck. So for that we need to go back to the Stream Deck software and let's define a new profile for Cubase. As you can see I already have a Cubase profile, but I'm going to define a new one so you can see how this actually works. So let's define a new profile and drag the Cubase MIDI command onto one of the buttons. Let's do the middle one. Now, as you can see over here, it immediately says MIDI configuration is OK. So every time you define a button, it checks whether everything has been set up. For example, whether there are virtual MIDI ports that it expects and that those virtual MIDI ports have also been set up in Cubase. If you click over here, you can see all the checks that the plugin does. And if any of the checks fail, then it will be marked with a red cross so you can correct the problem. And another thing that you can see over here that we have commands over here. And these are basically all the commands that were defined in the Cubase generic remote device. So let's assume that we want to add a button to start playing in Cubase. Now we probably want a better icon for this. So let's add a play icon over here. And fortunately the plugin has also added some icon files in its installation directory. So let's add an icon file from that directory. Again, it's in the same directory as the template was in. So app data, roaming, Elgato, stream deck plugins, the name of the plugin, extra icons. And you can see that we have a nice play button icon over here. So let's see if this works. And yes, it works fine. 
Now the nice thing in the Stream Deck is that every button can have two icons. One is for the inactive state of the button and one is for the active state of the button. And you can set the active play button icon by choosing the active state. As you can see, it is now dark gray. So if I push this, you can see that the icon on the Stream Deck turns to dark gray. But I think we want a better icon for that. So let's set it from file and let's choose the play button with a little green border around it. So now if I push play, you can see that the play button lights up with a green border. And as soon as I stop play, now with my regular keyboard, you can see that the play button on the icon gets back to the icon of the inactive state, which is without a green border. Now it would be nice to also have a stop button, of course. So let's add a stop button over here. Command stop, add an icon for stop. And that's this one. Add an active icon for stop. Let's choose the one with the blue frame. If I go back to the beginning of the project, you can see that now the stop button is active. If I push the play button, it gets a green border and Cubase is playing. And if I push the stop button, Cubase stops and the border around the play button disappears. Now in this way, you can basically define all buttons in the Stream Deck. And I've already done that in my Cubase profile, where I added the most useful buttons for me. What that means I need to switch the profile here in my Stream Deck software. And you can see that there's lots more buttons now. So this button on the top left is for moving back to my default profile that I use for the other applications. In there, I have a button to move to the Cubase profile. The second button over here is for starting up Cubase, but Cubase is already running. Button is for play, stop. If I have an audio track in here, which is record enabled, I can also start recording with this button, stop. I can move back to the beginning of the project with this empty button over here. That was the only action that I could not find a specific icon for. So I added a more generic icon to this button. There's a button to enable the click track, which you can see at the bottom right in Cubase. There's a button for fast forward, while you keep it pushed. A button for rewind, keeping it pushed. This button is for activating the cycle between the left and right locator. With these buttons, you can move between any defined markers on your marker track. This button is for moving to the left locator and this button is for moving to the right locator. This is the next page button, which moves to an empty page at the moment, but you can add additional buttons or actions from Cubase if you want to control even more via this plugin and via the Stream Deck. Now, if you want to, you can download this profile with the link in the description below. And after you've downloaded it, you need to import it into the Stream Deck software in this way. You go to settings over here, profiles, and over here you can then import the Cubase Stream Deck profile like this. And it's now called copy, but you can see that it has all the buttons defined in the way that I just showed you. Now, obviously this is not a very specific door controller for Cubase. So I would probably also not buy it specifically for controlling Cubase, but the Stream Deck is actually quite handy for a lot of tasks on your PC, especially if you're streaming or doing these YouTube videos, but also when you're doing a lot of Zoom calls or team meetings, it can be a very handy device. And then it's nice that it can also control Cubase. Now the plugin is free to use, but it does of course cost time and development. So for that purpose, the developer has included a donation link in the documentation of the plugin, but I'll also provide it in the description below. Now, if you like this video on controlling Cubase, I also made a video on the Cubase IC Pro app that allows you to control Cubase from a mobile phone or a tablet. Previously, it was only available in the Apple world, but now there's also an Android version. You can check out my video on Cubase IC Pro over here. Enjoy and see you soon.